Hello. <laughs> How are you? Just getting on. I'm just reading, <laughs> reading Michelle's dash of lovely colours. <laughs> So we thought we would do a little live session, really informal, just going to make some art, hang out with each other and talk about the challenge. So far, it's been amazing seeing everyone's discoveries and I just love how everyone's finding, I just love the individuality, is that the word? Individuality, <laughs> yes it is. Of oh, everybody. Yeah, so it's, um, let me to see if I can move this so your head's. Oh, in. Head. There you go. Look. <laughs> no, <I'm... laughs> That's it's so it. hard to get in. There we are. Oh, it doesn't matter, does it? No. You can see a bit of us. It's fine. Um, but yeah, no. What I love about this, and this is why Sharon wrote this, and what we're passionate about is, yes, you finding your own voice and people realizing that they're attracted to certain things and I got a, a message today from somebody just saying I'm totally overthinking all of this and I feel like an imposter and I keep comparing myself to everyone else and it's so hard not to but as soon as you can just accept that I'm just going to enjoy this like you just say the words out loud I'm just going to enjoy it just going to enjoy it and just to practice it yeah we are enjoying this moment, <laughs> this process that we're in and we're sharing. It's an art journey, isn't it? It's everybody's it on the same journey, but different points. And yeah. there's always going to be someone that you think, oh, I just don't really like to be the same as that person. But it's not it's, it's not your journey. That's You're the journey that you're on. It's not. It's someone else's journey, yeah, isn't it? It is. You'll get so much from it if you just let that fear go. And as I know it's hard. And just think to yourself, I'm just going to enjoy it. So today is all about colour. So I'm literally going to sit as we're talking. And um, we can bring out, bring, bring the it? camera down to our sketchbooks, maybe. Oh, yeah. Oh, you don't need to see our faces. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm enjoying pink. Pink, which is really bizarre because um, actually in my work, it's all about the lack of colour. It's, it's mostly tones and... and um, and shades and kind of sub subdued, subdued mm. tones. So my realization today is um. So I'm using. Um, I want to explain it to you a little bit. Mm. This is one of my sketchbooks. I've got lots of these, lots and lots and lots of them, um, and they are just full of inspiration and um, experiments. They're not going to be final outcomes or final pieces. They're kind of working drawings or sketches that I can just play with. So there's no fear. Here, it's just playtime. That's the whole point of doing this kickstart challenge, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Get playtime. And the more you can practice just being experimental, the more you will just enjoy it. Mm. I think when you when you do have all that fear, um, it's just recognising it and just pushing through it. Just knowing that we all have it as well. Excuse me, yeah. I'll just bite this a little. We do. We, we <laughs> it's, um, I don't know about you, but I get kind of... Um, caught up in that I have to produce a final outcome and it's got to be really great and it's got to be just so and just right and everything's got to be perfect and you know it's got to be an exact thing that's in my head or in my in my mind and then um and then when it doesn't happen I just get really dismayed and get really yeah. disheartened and I give up yeah um so then it's then you have to allow yourself time to play just do. have to and use different things, different materials, different techniques. Try something new. Um, just it's, it's allow yourself some freedom to play. It is. And you can literally, you can do this in 10 minutes. And I know people go, it's impossible to do it in 10 minutes. It's not. It isn't. <laughs> you can do it in 10 minutes. Um, and so I was looking at some of the posts from today. And Hayley brought some beautiful crochet examples in the post today. They were really lovely. Um, Lottie loves working in really, really vibrant, bold, saturated colours. She says, I wear lilac and orange and pink and neon and rainbows. <laughs> awesome. I love it. And I wear things that clash and I love it. For a long time, I was scared of colour and I have since learned that it brings me so much joy and feels at home. Oh, nice. It's interesting, isn't it, colour? Because it is a form of expression, isn't it? And colours carry so much emotion and they can trigger 
all sorts of things, I think, different colours. And it'll be different for everybody. Sometimes you, a colour is associated with things, isn't it? So, like, um, the colour red in the UK is danger. Everything's dangerous. Don't go there. It's hazard. Ah, signals. Mm. Signals danger. Um, whereas in in the Chinese culture, it's it's more of a celebration. So uh, we just entered the new year, mm -hmm. and Chinese culture have everything red. It's all about celebration, about loud, and about noise, and about wow! This is amazing. Yeah. So so it depends on where you're at and what you're doing, which is yeah. You know where you live. It's really, really exciting, really interesting. Shelley was saying, so without realising today's theme, we went looking at wallpaper and paint. Hubby is recycling an old TV stand. His project, nothing to do with me. <laughs> but while he was looking, these samples caught my attention. So Shelley's put them on our page, all from different shops. But what when I put them together, they all pull part of the theme together. Yes, amazing. This is what you'll start to notice when you start to gather. Not for everyone, but you'll notice certain patterns. So good. <laughs> I love seeing everybody's work. It's I know. So cool. Everybody takes a different, completely different approach to it. Yeah, Judy says, I really enjoyed this today. Totally mindless, colouring. We'll have a go at the second page later. Diane did a lot of lovely, colourful houses of Bristol where she lives. Like blocks of bright colours against black lines. Yeah, really nice. Oh, nice. It's funny how um, how we we colour is literally everywhere, everywhere. It's in our lives, and we're drawn to specific colours. The colours of houses and particular streets, um, associations of colour, um, our our interiors, the exteriors, the colour that is local. So belonging to something, so you'd expect the sky to be, in our case, grey. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Most of the time, we say. Um, <laughs> you know, or sometimes it's, you know, the grass is blue. So that's local colour. Um, and, you know, contrasting colour, there's colours that you can, you know, use again and again and again until they're completely muddy. You can use colour that makes you feel really happy and really kind of vibrant and and full of joy and and zingy it's it's incredible and yeah yeah but some people don't use it like um hazel's saying i love color but i don't use it in my work so far i do mainly black and white possibly with a contrast of color yeah mm. and it, it's why you know this is this is why we're doing it it's uh, we're playing let's play for me the color pink which was quite a, a strange one, um, was, um, so I, I feel like, I feel like I'm quite a feminist kind of character. I like to think that. Um, so when uh, my son was born, it was all about blue. When my daughter was born, it was all about pink. And I'm like, I'm just really not into that. So I avoided <laughs> it completely, completely avoided anything to do with um, associations of gender. Yeah, you know, whatever you know, we're obviously gender fluid. There's lots of gender fluidity going on. It's brilliant. I embrace all of that. It's fantastic. The more diverse our cultures are, the more rich it gets in my in my feelings and thoughts. So, I avoided pink a lot, um, because I didn't want to be that girly girl. You know, all of the those those things that we get taught as as women or as females. Mm. you know brought up in a gender you know stereotype um so I had a bit of a dig deep about that I really thought hard about that oh I, I actually quite like pink oh <laughs> am I allowed am I allowed to like pink because you put yourself off pink yeah. because of the I'm not I don't like pink <laughs> yeah but actually I really like it so yeah. now I'm going to embrace that and uh, maybe maybe explore that that feeling or that emotion or that avoidance um so where does that go? You know, my, my work is mostly about um, nature and being outdoors and using elements and finding a kind of calm, peace, um, breathing space that is just like a kind of meditative, lovely, joyful place that I go to, which has no room for pink. 
um, yeah, until Lottie, now. Lottie's saying that. She said she avoided pink for years too because it seemed anti-feminist, but now I'm mm. very okay with being a feminist who loves pink. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's, um, it's a personal this, journey, isn't but it? This just shows you how powerful colours can be, though. It's like, you know, the the association now yeah. for certain people, you know, yeah. pink meaning so much about us being forced to be feminine, and yeah. that's how powerful colours. That's how powerful art is. But colour alone, you know, it's um, it's really incredible when you start to learn more about it. Like what you're doing there. Um, yeah, yes. just a... finger painting. <laughs> Lottie likes finger painting. How are you all? Let us know. It's so great to see you all. I'm going to just go back through the comments, actually. Yeah. And oh, let us know. Amazing. Paulette's here. Hello, hi, Amy's hi, here. Hi. Naomi, hello. Hello. Joy, Joan, Cara, <laughs> Melanie, Preeti, Lindsay, hello. Groovy gang. <laughs> I'm loving it. Oh, I'm so glad. Sandra, <laughs> Janine, Angela, hello. I'm going to have to get on the floor. I can't sit. Thank can't you, sit. Preeti. Yes, I thought. Colour. Um, put this on today. <laughs> it's like, this is what I love about this challenge, though, is even if you don't have time to sit and do this, it's just being observant of colour. And like yesterday, it was all about being observant of media and, and just noticing, noticing text around you. And this Kickstart challenge, you can use this forever. You know, whenever you need a, an injection of just being present in the moment, you can jump back to this and just think, right, Today, I'm just gonna notice, notice text around me. I'm looking now, there's a book hanging over there with happy thoughts on it. And you literally just take your sketchbook and just see what you notice that's around you. And it's such a powerful exercise to do, to switch your brain on and start looking for inspiration. And then, as I keep saying, before you know it, the inspiration will find you. You, oh. won't, you won't be looking for it anymore and you'll see things and you'll be like, oh God, that's so weird that I saw that. And it's not, it's because you have done all of this work and you're tuned in. So it's, um, it's really exciting. Um, and let us know if you have any questions, any questions whatsoever. All. Jane says, I'm absolutely loving it, so glad. Joan said, I'm so excited doing my daily challenge. I'm from Ireland. Lovely to have you here, Joan. Thanks so much. You are so encouraging. I'm not as nervous about my work as much. Good for you. Yes. Jackie, Janine, hello. Jack and Janine's loving kickstart. Hello, Maribel. When I overthink and get overcritical of myself, I, I get feedback from my sister. We are all our own, our own worst critics. Yes, we are. Angela says she's behind. Hey, Angela, I'm behind. I'm behind, but we'll definitely be sticking with it. Good. And the thing is, if anyone's behind, just keep going. Just know that tomorrow is another day, and you can dip in. And we've written each challenge with a little five-minute one, so that you're not overwhelmed. You can literally not ten minutes. Sorry, not five minute. <laughs> ten minutes. A ten minute version. There's a 10 minute version, isn't there? And a, and a longer version if you need it. Yeah. And you can do whatever you want. You can do it with your eyes closed. Look. Random. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love random. Random, just playing. Opposite hand. You can doodle it. You can use lots and lots of different mixed medium materials, whatever you want. Do it on a computer, get your hands messy. Um, use anything you like. Pretty likes earthy and pastel colours. Brilliant. Janine, yeah. I've made a photo collage of wallpapers in our home and replicated the colours in my sketchbook. Nice. It's interesting. It's revealed how much we've used similar colours in multiple rooms and how colours are missing completely. Aha, uh -huh, mm. we have a Victorian house. We're trying to be authentic. Yes. So lovely when you just notice things and then you're like, whoa, this seems so obvious. Now I can see it. <laughs> Um, Tina's loving it. Great. Karina working in shades of brown. Nice. Ooh. Jean, hello, Jean. Nice to see you here. I met Jean a long, long time ago. Life is colour. Yay. It is. It's so personal, isn't it? Um, Amy says, I'm really loving just doing carefree abstract lately, blobs and squiggles, people around me just ask, yeah, but what is it? It doesn't have to be something, it can just be for fun, yeah, for colour expression, totally. So it's funny that people say that though, isn't it? It's like 
so some people need something you know they need a reference they need someone some people will look at art and they have to see something that they recognize and it's just how all brains work differently and for some people they don't some people want to feel an artwork and they don't want anything described and this is why art is so subjective and there's a place for everybody because art we all are drawn to different things because of our own experiences the way we feel have seen and that's why it's so amazing and that's why i believe there's a place for everybody in the art world because we all have our own story we are all individual and we've all got something to say and especially through art when we can say it through art i think it's lovely it's kind of a universal language, isn't it? Yeah. Um, a language without without words, so without the written the written word, um, and it's how we how we express our our feelings, our emotions, our our thoughts, our experiences. It's how we communicate something that's really rich or diverse or political. It's how we we use art to to act as a platform for a story or to convey a meaning or a message or emotion or mm. I mean it's it's everything art is everything it's um you can get if you have a picture if someone flashed a picture at us um of you know just a random picture just anything um we know in an instant what it means we because it's 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 embedded in our subconscious we're all connected aren't we in this I'm going to get really quite hippie on us now, <laughs> <laughs> but I do believe this. It's it. We are connected. You know, we all have, we all have the we're the same genetic kind of makeup. I mean, not specific, but um, we have you know head, body, arms, legs. You know, generally speaking, and the way that we think is very similar as well. We we're brought up in in one world which is about images and colours and textures and food when we're when we're little I'm gonna go off on a story when we're young you know we're told that don't eat that don't eat that berry because it's poisonous you know or, you know so you know in the natural world there's lots of yellows if you if you see lots of yellows and blacks it's like danger you know because the natural world says um, don't eat this because mm. it's poisonous you know and it's it's color is everywhere you, art is so universal and so important um, and we don't need words to express that you know, it's like music as well isn't it music is the same music is an art form there's highs and lows and colorful moments of the composition in a, in a painting or not painting a um uh, a piece of music. I think it's um, yeah. I think it's the same. It's the same thing. It is. Yeah. There's so many. Yeah. I'm music. quite inspired by that thought of brown now. Oh, it doesn't work. I'm going brown. Yellow. Some some yellow. Oh, Are they your own pens? Yeah, they're Edith's. Oh. <laughs> Do you borrow some? No, no. I was just wondering, like, did that was that part out of here? Because I've never seen it before. No. <laughs> well, I thought it's an idea. Nice. I do, really collect, cool. I do collect things. And I thought I don't remember collecting that. <laughs> it's actually in my van as I'm way over here. Oh, I was thinking, oh, that's interesting. Nice, colourful, bright pens in there that I'm going to use. Sharon's got a camper van that just has everything in it that you could ever possibly need. And when this True. is before the virus, you know, whenever we've gone places, um, you know, if you're stuck for something, Sharon's like, oh, I've got one of those in the van, I'll just go and get it. Yeah. Like I once we went to this event and I was really cold, freezing cold. Oh yeah. And Sharon went, Don't worry, I've got a blanket in the van. And she pulled out this blanket. I'm not joking you, it was as big as this room. <laughs> it was the most confused blanket ever. It was massive. <laughs> it was huge. Um, she's got everything in the van. Yes. Um Cara yeah. says, I've always been scared of using colour, but I'm learning more about it. We were studying the photos recently and I painted a glorious goose in turquoise, purples, oranges and yellows. That sounds delightful. Oh, 
lovely. You always you always need. So this is good. That's a good point. Phobes always use. Um, they were like the they they birthed it really in the Western world. That's why we use color. So in the um, I know you probably know this. Quite, it's really mm. fascinating. Is this but is really everyone fascinating? Everyone does know it though, do they? That's um, the thing. I'm gonna. So yeah, it's true. No, but some people might not have heard of the yeah. phobes. That's okay. Just also, you know, you yeah yeah. The, let, let's talk about the phobes because it's a really good, it's an art movement. Yeah. Um, in the 1900s, the early 1900s, the art movement, the phobes, um, played with the series of people, a bunch of people, a bunch of artists, just explored colour. And the colour in their, in their work, this is what tied them all together as a group of artists, they were just absolutely fascinated with colour and that was the most important thing. It wasn't subject matter. It wasn't what they were drawing or painting, it was just the colour, and that was their focus. And the reason why we have so many amazing discoveries in the early 1900s was just before that. Um, the camera, um, we, we developed the stop part of, of the develop um, in a camera so we could fix an image onto a piece of paper. And that made, that made artists, artists go, oh, do you know what? I'm just going to paint for the fun of it then. <laughs> oh, there's no rules anymore. I can just paint what I like because I don't actually have to paint something that's representational for a client, you know, for a, for a, someone who is paying them to paint a portrait of their dog or a landscape or to, I don't know, whatever you would paint a picture in those days for. There was no rules anymore. It just made artists explore so many different things. The one thing that I'm really fascinated by was in 1908, Picasso was the first person ever to leave a piece of newspaper on his on his painting. Don't you think that's really wow. fascinating? Yeah. Yes. Only 122 years ago, 21 <laughs> years ago, someone actually made, someone, an artist actually said, do you know what? I'm going to leave that piece of newspaper on my painting. <laughs> and, now in, and now in art school, we're like, no, we've got to get some, we've got to get some collage in, and it's yeah. a proper thing. Yeah, that's always amazed me. Imagine being the first person it ever, was amazing, wasn't ever to leave something on there and just be completely revolutionary. And all yeah, the art I'm... critics are like, what? "What are you doing? <laughs> <That's> rubbish!" <laughs> Literally, and the yeah. other artists are like, "Yeah, it's great. I'm gonna do that as well." That's like. That's like the ultimate play, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Picasso was a player. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was a player, yeah. <laughs> so they say. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Fascinating. That, that camera thing. I mean, if we look at technology as well, I'm going off on a tangent, but in the 1970s, 74, the first Apple Mac computers were available. And it's only in, so 1970s, 80s, 90s, 90s, so like 40, 50 years. Is mm -hmm. it? Oh, don't ask me to do maths. We can't do maths. But imagine what the technology is like now and how we're going to push colour and all of those things and optical illusions, you know, and those, the way that we see colour, you know, using our phones and just putting it, taking mm -hmm. out the colour and changing it in an instant. Mm -hmm. You know, you can have the same image, but change it just by using a touch of button, just like that. Yeah. Quick, 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 quick. Jacqueline, hello. I'm pencil sketching in graphite, exploring the different shades and line thicknesses by changing the angle, the pressure of the paper. Oh, it's just so nice, isn't it? It's so, it sounds so therapeutic. It's really good to hear that people are doing it in a physical way as well. With, I don't know about you, but on a screen, it's quite, there's a lot of people on a screen lately. A lot more than usual, which is fine. It's it absolutely fine. fine. It's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with the screen, but it's quite nice to have something that's physical, tangible as well. I love it. I love it, Tanya. Oh, Becky says, this has come at such a right time for me. I need my sketchbook out and play. Been feeling really stuck recently with some blank canvases staring back at me. Oh. Need to just have fun. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. And this is why, um, because of course, this is leading into Make Your Mark as well. And I know some of you will be joining us next week for Make Your Mark. Ooh, and so excited about that. I know, we just realised, we were like, Make Your Mark starts next week. <laughs> like, time's going by so fast. Um, 
but yeah this was uh the reason why we wrote make your mark all those years ago we wrote make your mark five years ago uh, just just oh, under five years ago actually it is our baby isn't it yeah it's our baby yeah it's our first course we ever wrote and um for this reason to push people to just play experiment but you but find your own voice as an artist and to find your own voice as an artist this is how you find it it's really important to reflect to play to notice patterns to notice and start to hone in um on certain things and going going deeper on them is where you start to get real depth in your work and yes it's exciting and we've had lots of questions about make your mark which I'll, I'll answer in a minute i just want to keep going through the questions um in order so i don't miss any anything let me just see where was i up to um I love it. Hey, Lorna, 50 shades of grey here in West Cork. Yeah. <laughs> Trish is using pink today as well. And I'm not a pinkish girl. Pink is in the air. Uh, Lorna's saying, yeah, I'm, I'm behind. Does it matter? Absolutely not. I'm nervous to post photos because I'm a little bit behind. No, don't worry. It doesn't matter. You can literally go back to day one, post do day one as many times as you like and post and it doesn't matter. Just share what day you're posting so that we know and yeah that's we fine want to see it, we want to see it yeah you've got up until the 5th of march to do this and then everything comes down and everything's moved to make your mark then which is this is the prep work for make your mark because when we first ran make your mark the first two or three times the biggest everyone loved it but we could see the biggest time came from this part was from just thinking, stopping, looking, gathering. And so we turned that into the prep and it's worked really well, hasn't it? Because yeah, then really people nice. who join Make Your Mark are ready to, to take it further and, and take your ideas further in, a, in a, an experimental way, ready to make a final piece or a collection. So yes, don't worry about being behind. Share with us. We, yeah, we just want to see your work, Lorna and it's kind of like the mindset as well the mindset of 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 getting ourselves into that happy place and that kind of okay where do i start what do i do you know that blank canvas syndrome mm -hmm. we all get it you know i look at a piece of clay or a piece of you know a sketchbook i get a nice fresh fresh sketchbook and i don't want to i don't want to spoil the pages yeah and i'm afraid to just take that next step so these are kind of warm-up activities aren't they they're kind of just yeah. getting us warm and get it into the get into the feeling and the spirit of allowing yourself some time just for you just yeah to explore and to play and to have some fun yeah and approach it with some fresh eyes so and without any rules or without anyone giving you pressure yeah they're looking over your shoulder and go oh, that's not very good don't do that yeah There's... even yourself giving your personal <laughs> pressure yeah but we're constantly doing it aren't we to ourselves it's got to look like a certain thing or be like something else that we've seen or we've got to you know we i have a negativity committee in my head and my negativity committee say oh you're not gonna do that that's not so great and i and i look at them and i say thank you ever so much but i've got this you can go and have a cup of tea so these all these figures or these little characters in my mind i just make them go and have a cup of tea or go and dig some garden or retire them for a little bit you know just give me some space so view it and then i say right now i've got some time and i tell my tell my family as well i'm at work this is my time and i have um i have a spare room very fortunate enough to have a spare room at home where i do all of my playing in i've got my drum kit in there and i have my guitars and some music it's just a play time i can make a mess very similar to this one actually which is really lovely <laughs> it's just a play time but it, it didn't it wasn't always that way i started off with um with a kitchen table or Ooh, a corner yeah. of the bedroom yeah or something or just actually my my sketchbook on my lap on a sofa with my headphones on 
you know, blocking out everybody else's noise. So it's just mine. And it's it's kind of like this kickstart challenge is about giving yourself some time to play and just for, even if it's just for 10 minutes you're entitled to that but everybody's entitled to have 10 minutes just by themselves just mm -hmm. to do what they want to do i think it's really important to acknowledge that especially in our fast world of do 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 you must you must do this you must do that it must have an end result you, yeah. you know what's the point yeah you know you can't do that because it's got to have you know you've got to achieve something or you've got to you know, reach the end point of something, and that's such a big, long task, which is daunting. So yeah, that sketchbook, blank page, totally agree. It's really difficult to get that mindset into, it's fine, just play with it. It doesn't have to go anywhere. It's just exploring. Tan says, I'm very monochrome in everything. My sister sent me a challenge a few years ago to not buy black clothes for 12 months, and now it's all navy and magenta, lovely. Sean's tuning in from New York. Hello. I'm a bit behind on the challenge, but that's okay. Yes, I'm catching up. Don't worry. So just remember that it's like 10 minutes. You can nip in, have a look. And if you can carve out that 10 minutes, you'll get so much from it. Aviva, lovely to see you. Hello, Freddie. Nice to see you here as well. And Les. <laughs> um, Chantel says she's really enjoying it. Oh, good. Kelly's just about to start day three, really enjoying it so far and resolved that it's okay to do it at my own pace. Oh. Exactly. The whole point of this is for you to kickstart your art and enjoy it. So, yeah, at your own pace and just start noticing things. You know, if you're going to get anything out of this, this kickstart, it's to start noticing things around you and letting go like Sharon's just been saying just letting go of the pressure that you're putting on yourself to just be in your sketchbook and play and it be about the process not the outcome like I don't you know this it's it's not that's not going to go anywhere but the very act of me just doing that I feel so relaxed I was looking at all the colors merging with each other and noticing some nice little colors in there that I like and then I just put this on, this copper, oh my gosh, and I, <laughs> I was like, wow, I love that. I love copper. Oh, yeah, Look that's that. good. And it's really it's iridescent. iridescent, yeah. <laughs> no. What a lovely word. I literally put that on, I was like, ooh. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> and that feeling, I mean, money can't buy that feeling. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Putting copper paint on the page of your finger, the best. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I've been in lockdown for three months now. <laughs> you can literally, you can. Li <laughs> did I actually say that out loud? I did, didn't know. Yep, I did. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's so. Oh, I love this. Julie's bought a sketchbook for the first time in 30 years. Amazing. What? That's amazing. I did her first sketch last night. So behind again but it doesn't matter and have finished painting today so i'll have a go it's, it's just incredible maybe let's talk about time you know there's a there's a few comments here about time isn't there i've got to do it on my own time i'm behind but let's talk about that timeline when when i talk about time in my in my world i think of it as um a circle so this is a circle thing for me. We have we have time that is on a clock. We have time that's in our in our minds, in our bodies. You know, so that birth, life, life, death, time. We have the time for the seasons. We have time for um, for you know growing babies or or not, or time walking with a dog or being active or not. Um, we have time throughout the day to sleep, to eat, to you know, to be awake. That timeline is like it's a real it's a real struggle for people because we live in patriarchy we, we live in a system where we're taught to we must always work we must always be doing something always chasing our tails always um, we've always got to achieve something and that is a linear um, so we you know in a nutshell we we're born we we play then we go to school and then it's time to 
you know, to fit in all of this stuff and all of those achievements which, which are put onto us you know, by our societies and ourselves to fit into a certain specific thing. Whereas artists, I think, have this circular time, and I think everybody does, but if you notice, you can choose when you're doing anything you want for how long you want. So um, Michelle and I talk about our our preferred times when we're we're doing things. So my preferred time is night time. I'm a night owl. And Michelle is definitely a morning early bird. So the times in the times when I'm more um, awake and more alive and more right, I'm going to do this, achieving something I know for myself is at night time. And that's when I that I've got no distractions. All my family are in bed, they I've I've got all the time that I want. It might, it might lead into like quite late in the night, which I'm aware of, and then it's time to go to bed and go to sleep because I've got to get up in the morning. But maybe think about the time that you can carve in for yourself rather than this linear perceived idea that you have to achieve something every day or every, um, it's, it's yours, it's your time, everybody's different. It's, it's quite a thing, isn't it, for us to, to get rid of that perceived, I've only got so much time in the day, I can't do this because I've got X, Y and Z, shopping to do, you know, dependence or, um, or work or challenges or I'm tired, you know, it's, there's always something um, preventing us from giving that time that we need for our art and ourselves. I, I, think, think, it's a, I think it's worth it. I think it's about habit and that's why we say 10 minutes a day because everything is about it's a habitual like brushing your teeth you do that because it's a habit so you carve out five ten minutes how long it takes you to brush your teeth <laughs> not that long for me <laughs> but you carve that time out every day because you've built the habit and it's important um and so so for me um things that I do in my life like reading I, I I couldn't find time to read because last year COVID happened and I realised that my reading time was when I was sitting in the car to pick the kids up because I used to go and pick them up earlier and then all of a sudden I didn't read anymore and I didn't read for a whole year and I realised it was because my routine had completely changed and I could no longer find that 15 minutes a day where I used to read my book because all of a sudden life takes over and it was like, where am I going to find this 15 minutes? And I had to purposefully find those 15 minutes. And what I do now, and it's taken me a while, but I read every night before I go to bed and I read every morning, even if it's one page. I just read one page before sleep and one page in the morning and I'm reading every day again. It's only one page, but that's the start. And now I'm starting to love reading. Because before I was like, oh God, I need to read, but the book's sitting there. And I was just like, I didn't know what was wrong with me. I was just like, I want to read it, but I can't be bothered. <laughs> and it's just because of the habit. I got out the habit. And then you kind of forget what the purpose of reading is. Like, what am I going to get out of it when I'm so tired? And actually, I'm really enjoying the book that I'm reading. I'm, I'm, It's just really amazing. And it's the same with art, like this, with your sketchbook. When you start getting that habit again, what happens is, the day that you don't have time or something comes up, you'll miss this. You'll miss sitting with your sketchbook, doodling and finger painting and whatever you're doing because your brain starts to, to notice it's not there anymore. Um, so uh, we all have 24 hours in a day and it's how we choose to spend them. And once I started saying that to myself, when there's something that I really want to do, I just think, right, how am I going to carve out the time for this? Yeah. And be really purposeful. But it is hard when there is so many things going on. It is. Um, let me check the comments again. Uh, Wendy, I'm enjoying uh, this a lot. Yay. And sharing on this platform. You guys are great. Will there be an after 10 day challenge? Um, yes. Well, this, this, leads into make your mark which is Sharon's course which starts next week so um which I'm really excited about. yeah I'm so so, so this kickstart leads into Sharon's course mm -hmm. so if anybody's interested in that I can put the link and you can read about that it will be available from Sunday so um 
Yes, it's really, really exciting. And Make Your Mark is all about taking this further and continuing it on and helping you to stay motivated to making, bringing you together. Sharon will take you behind the scenes of how she uses this process as a professional artist. And it's about taking it on a, a deeper level, looking at formal elements in art, which sounds like a really scary, boring term, but it actually isn't. It's really exciting because it's what makes up art. It's a language. And the formal elements is what you play with and make your mark to really find your voice. It teaches you so much, make your mark. I love it. It teaches you how to read your own artwork, how to read others, how to find your own voice, but also to continue this making and to really mm -hmm. keep this alive so yes it's amazing it doesn't it doesn't matter either what kind of specialist area that you're in so if you are um, at the moment you know we're, we're using messy kind of creative things that we can touch in the physical world but it doesn't really matter what kind of uh, media that you use so if you're a painter watercolor artist or if you're a, you know photographer or whether you are whether you're a graphic designer or um, textile artist or a fine art painter or a sculptor or a, it's chocolate, the, chocolate. <laughs> chocolate. Oh God, I say because <laughs> Evelyn's our chocolate, uh, resident chocolate artist oh, God, and yes. you know it, but the principles they are, they are exactly. the same it's all about how how you use formal elements and and how you bring those together to describe something. And you can do that with chocolate. Are you still, the way you construct things and bring them together, it's, um, So you want to form, yeah. you talk about formal elements a little bit? Oh, do you can do. So for, a formal element is yeah. colour, you know, that's, a, that's yeah. a formal element, an element that is form, a, a formal element of art. So colour is used for um, communicating, vibrancy, um, energy, um, a mood, emotion, a feeling, and that's just one element. So colour is what we're we're using today. And then there's there's line, there's shape, there's tone, there's weight, there's mass, there's scale, there's all of those are called formal elements. And and in the Maker Mark, I will show you how to use or how artists use those formal elements in the work. So then you get to understand what it is that you are doing, and it gets you to understand why you really like something or you're drawn to something. It's because of the formal elements. Yeah. There's that really great analogy, isn't there, about if you go into a gallery, you know, some people just walk past the work and some people go, oh, I love it. Oh, my God, I've got to stay this, you know, and watch us see it all day long. And some people really hate it. And it's because of the way that the formal elements um, are used in a piece of artwork. And it's kind of a mirror to your own work, so your own individual person as the viewer looking at the work. But also, if you if you ever had something about your work that you think it's just not right and I don't know why, and that's what make, Mark teaches you, it teaches you how to look at your work and think there's something not right here, what can I adjust to make this stronger, to make it more powerful? And usually it's the composition, it's the contrast, there's not enough contrast, it's the way the eye has been moved around, these small things, and you can make some small adjustment adjustment in your work and it completely changes the conversation mm. or, the, or, or yeah. what we're looking at and that's why make your mark is so great because it teaches you how to make those adjustments um, and how to start noticing how you can make those improvements to your work and especially you know when you've got something in your head and you think I want to paint this and then you paint it and it's not what you wanted to paint <laughs> and it doesn't come out anywhere like oh, that all the time and that this oh. is what make your mark helps you with to start thinking okay this is what i this is what i wanted to do it didn't come out like this and so what do i need to focus on now to make it more like that or it's so understanding you're asking the right questions yeah the, the tools that you learn the tools that you make up make up that conversation like um, a really good piece of music you know, it's got high notes, it's got low notes, it's just got the right mood or the feeling that you really think, oh, this is really good. Oh, there's like a bum note somewhere. You think, oh, that doesn't quite work for me. It's yeah. understanding those bum notes in the in your work as well. It's I'm just sitting here learning a lot myself about my own colour. I'm just loving this copper. And I'm really hating this yellow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at this. 
I like it. <laughs> there you go, me, see. It's a, ooh, yeah. it's too much. I need to knock it back somehow. See, what am I going and to I use? quite like it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I do. Wakes me up. <laughs> well, I don't mind a little bit. Though. No, I yeah, a yeah. Bit of yellow, but actually, I'm going to knock it back so that it just takes it back a bit. So it's got the underpainting underneath. Oh, I love it. I just love how far we all are around the world. Laura's tuning in from Virginia. Hello. Oh, and Joyce is tuning in from Canada as well. Alison loves colour. Brighter the better. Um, pink has never bothered me. I was always a tomboy and never want, uh, went by gender rules as I had two brothers and my mum was a feminist. So the extreme... Yay. So I'm now at nearly 60, equal to my hubby and embrace, and not a feminist, but I do embrace equality for everyone. Yeah, I'm I'm the same. Yeah, the fewer labels, yes. Yeah. The fewer labels we have, the more equal would be key. I cannot agree with you more, Alison. Oh, I love that. Yeah, drop the labels. Uh, when you say um, when you say take photos and add them to a challenge, do lots of people actually have printers to prove? print photos super fast i'm curious where can i buy one i'm having great fun with oranges in these challenges making a big mess and loving it yay so yeah you can get um printers pretty cheaply online and yeah they're really quite when i say quite cheap um, um i bought mine for, relatively um, 35 um, pounds so this is about 35 37 euros or um probably the same about at the same um, and the printing ink is probably just as much as the printer. So yeah, I was going to say that. When you yeah. do to buy a, a printer ink, most people buy a new printer because you get the inks for free. <laughs> um, but anyway, but yet yeah, you don't have to print them. You can yeah. go digital and just create a collage using Pinterest. Canva.com is great for creating and pulling your images together in one place till you decide which ones you want to print out. Um, you don't have to actually print out things. No. You can keep them on on a screen on whatever you're using, laptop in my case. Yeah. Um, and you can draw from them. It can it can be your response about drawing. You might not actually research actual things. You might think about researching your experiences, like your dreams, your your fantasies, what's inside you, um, like your emotions, they don't have images that you can look at. It's great to reference if you can, but um, how other people approach that same or similar kind of um, theme, but you don't actually have to. You can just draw from life or draw from, draw from things, draw from objects. You can actually gather found objects. They don't have to have a printer. So there's there's lots of things that you can look around. You know, in just in this room, we've got drawings, we've got um, um, printed things already. We've we've got textiles, we've got bags, we've got chairs. You know, or we've we've got actual we've got things like um, different types of textiles, different types of paper. You can collect things and just put them in a box. That can be your research. You know that's a really good good way of you to collect what's personal to you go outside go and get some um, inspiration from outdoors as well whether you're in a city or the country or or by the sea it's there's there's no right or wrong it's it's totally personal how you use how you use your in, inspiration or find it I know one artist um, who is an amazing artist, she's fantastic, like one of my favourite artists actually. Um, she is, she goes outside and she she looks at the landscape. So she's an abstract painter, she looks at the landscape, she draws in plein air, so which is outside, she draws um, and, and takes her pastels and her sketches, um, sorry, her pastels, and she just sketches in a sketchbook um, or on loose sheets of paper, and then she puts them to one side so she doesn't even refer to them. She actually then uses her mind um, to then recreate what her experience was outside of the landscape. 
So she's not even actually looking at her original drawings. She's just using that experience and that's her research. It's incredible. So mm -hmm. you don't actually have to have a printer. It's totally up to you what you use. It's, there's no rules. There are no rules in anything. Because we're artists, we can do what we like. Tanya, right. Tanya's had her first commission. Well done, Tanya. Yay! Congratulations. That's incredible. Oh, I love it. Peggy's come from the garden digging soil. Noticed how incredibly colourful worms are. Wow. I like it. See that was little... that, would you? <laughs> I know, but this is why the challenge is so great because it just makes you take notice of those things that you know you might not have. It's so great, isn't it? Um, now inspired to go and capture those wormy colours. Yes, that could lead into a whole project, couldn't it? Oh, I love it. Lindsay's mixing with her three-year-old daughter. Hello, Georgia. Now they will definitely teach us how to play. Yes, oh, they are the best teachers. Without without preconceived ideas of what it could be like. Yeah. Thank you, Katie, for letting me know about the YouTube comments. Um, Heidi says, I love colour. Having lots of colour around me as I'm shielding. There are days when life feels very dull. Yeah, I'm totally with you on that. I've been out the house. I, d I can count on one hand, I think, or two hands maybe. How many times I've been out this year? Oh, it's hard, isn't it? On these days, I find brightness, uh, brightness of top or dress or shoes. That's so lovely. Oh, sending you a big hug, Heidi. Mm -hmm. It is really hard. I think that's why we need art more now than ever than we ever did. Oh, yeah. Amy says that it's lovely just to have someone here to paint along with. This is great, it is, isn't it? Melanie's using clashing colours, amazing. Francesca, hello. We love colours, breathe, live colour. Still realise I have a problem with red. <laughs> <laughs> that orange, oh, I love this. That orangey, <laughs> reddy, strange colour. I love that. I love that. That's <laughs> my favourite. <laughs> That's one of my favourite colours, that orange, that, that mix between orange and red. Oh, I love it. I'm always, in fact, I've always, that we did a studio session once. I do studio sessions with my members every Friday. And I usually put myself on mute because we, we do chat and then we all get down to artwork and we mute just so we can all focus. And I forgot to mute myself one week. <laughs> did you? What was it like? <laughs> there was a bit of swearing. And I was, I was, because I was trying to mix a ready orange and I was spent the whole, Full 30 minutes trying to replicate. <laughs> I've got the colour somewhere in one of my sketchbooks lying around. I spent 30 minutes trying to colour mix the same orangey red that I'd made the week before and I couldn't match it. And I was trying to like get a little bit of this yellow and a little and and I was I was getting really angry. <laughs> I was swearing and then I came back and everyone was commenting whilst I was oh. like, going, what is she doing? <laughs> That's just brought back a memory. That's really funny. That is really funny. Oh, this is nice. David went, um, he said it was wonderful on this grey dull day to see my first bright yellow daffodil. Oh. It's a great feeling, isn't it, when you see the yellow daffodils? Um so Lou says we've so much choice, I just didn't know how to start today. Um, and so yeah because you've got so many ideas and things like that so literally if you don't know where to start just do what I've just done you literally just sit with your book get a load of paint out get a load of colour and just put it onto the page and just start there that's personally how I how I start when um, when I start playing with colour because what happened just now is then I just literally don't even use a brush either. I've just used my finger, just mixed them up with my finger. And I just start to see how they're all mixing together and how they sit next to each other. And and then I've just done it on this page and I've learned so much about this copper and how that works with a different kind of blue. Literally just sitting now, just by mixing paint with my finger, just starting to think, actually, I might bring this colour into some of my paintings. So you just, it literally, can just be so 
something so simple that you just play with that goes, ah, you know what, I'm going to use that. And another way is if you don't know where to start is to literally just look around you at the first thing that you notice. It's about not maybe overthinking it, just, oh, wow, I love that colour down there and I'm just going to try and replicate that. Or go through your photographs and pick a photograph that really stands out because of the colour. Or go on a walk, take your camera, photograph colours that you see. They're all some good starting points when it comes to colour. I would say, do you have any any suggestions about oh, starting a colour? Start? That's the that's the thing, isn't it? Where do we my start? Tea, my tea, I forgot the my tea. tea. Um, oh, there's lots of different ways that you can choose a starting point with colour, especially. Number one, you choose one colour. Just choose one, any colour. It is, you know. So, uh, so for an example, I have a bunch of these um, in my bag um, because I always have art materials everywhere. And, um, and I really like the vibrancy of these. So I've chosen that. I've also come and raided Michelle's pastels box. So it gives me two different, two different types of application of color. I've got a sketchbook. So um, choose one color and then just take it for a walk, just fill it. So that's where I'm gonna start. And then I'm gonna find the shapes in there. So choose a shape. So circles, for instance. So draw some circles. See where that goes. Some big ones, little ones, um, all over the page. Some random ones. Just take your paper for all. If you're if you're too controlling in your mind, or if you're a perfectionist, use your opposite hand. Um, the other day, I found my daughter um, drawing with her feet, saying, "Look, my baby, Morgan, I'm drawing with my feet." Yeah, she's just got pastels between the toes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great. Really great. So opposite <laughs> hand, loosen yourself up, give yourself a timer perhaps. So um, you could take your colour for a walk, um, do squiggly lines, fill up, a pa fill up your page full of lines in a particular way, full of it. And then just notice, notice what comes out of that. Um, Katie, Katie said, this is so good to have this session because I realise that I'm starting to tighten up again after a good start and spoil your lovely inspirational approach with my overthinking it's so easily done isn't it but that's so good that you have recognized that and if you'd like us to do another one of these sessions on friday give us a comment if you want the same time on friday we could do a session from sharon's pottery and see how that works out if you'd like would you like a peek behind the scenes in sharon's <laughs> pottery because i could head over there on friday and uh, we could do a live session from there. Oh, the Wi Fi isn't great there though, so but we could give it a go. The Wi Fi isn't great, it's a, a mobile Wi Fi, I'm not plugged in unfortunately, but it's worth giving it a go because it is quite a special place. I do really love it over there. So, the pottery is my, my workshop where I go and play with clay and I, um, I share it and I kind of sublet it to other artists who um, want to play with clay as well, which is great. Okay, this yeah, is, someone's, this yeah. is a good, this is a Some, good Hold on, hold on one second, oh. sorry. Um, someone was saying here, I'd never heard of the Fauves. Don't worry. You know, th I'm sorry. <laughs> that was me. Yeah, but Zooming. I know, I know. And so yeah. that's why I jump in because no, you don't have to have heard of the Fauves either. And um, it's it does not matter. It just means that, you haven't come across them now you do so go and have a little google and find and then that's something something else that is added to your uh i've got some funny st stories about this about not knowing who people are and <laughs> getting muddled up i'm going to share it on monday in my podcast <laughs> we all know it'll make you know. feel better we all know what we know don't we yeah um there's loads, of stuff, that there's loads of stuff i don't know about art history i just want to say that i have studied art history and i spent 10 years I spent 10 years trying to put uh, images on my wall in timelines, doing mind maps, doing everything to try and absorb the art history timeline. And I can still not tell you what era people were from or what timeline things go in. I go to Sharon for that because she's great with that stuff. <laughs> I go, what era was this again? And so, and I just accepted <laughs> that myself. I just don't, yeah. 
I'm just mm -hmm. going to say my face just my face just mirrored yours then um, because the, the negativity committee were just in my head going, oh, you don't know as much as you know. Actually, I do know quite a lot about art history because I used to teach it. Yes, Sharon was my teacher. That's how I know her. Yeah, lots of people. Oh, wow, look at all these guesses for Friday. Right, we will sort. Is it okay? Oh, yeah, Is it yeah, okay for coming for great. Friday? Yeah, that'd be really great. I like to get, I like an excuse to go over to Sharon's Pottery because it is amazing. It's a really so amazing, we'll a it's tour. a safe place. It's a safe place. Everybody needs yes. a safe place. Can I share with this with you guys? Yeah. Uh, how, how long? We got? We're nearly at the end. Of yeah, we are. We'll, we'll be back on Friday at 3 p.m. Yeah. So in one hour, I want to just share with you my sketchbook. So this is, I'm, I started with a colour pink, so pink felt tip, um, and I've got a shape in mind of a figure because that's my thing. I like figures, but I don't, I don't, um, I make art out of clay. So clay is very muddy, it's very brown. I'm bringing pink into my clay. So very, very quick sketches, lots of energy in these ones. These ones are not so much energetic because of the colours that I've used. They're quite subdued and calm, even though this, the figures are the same. And this is how we use colour. Um, so that one, very similar figures, but lots of different lines and marks and different shapes in there. This one has got, um, so I'm not sure if you can see this. This is the, oh, mirror image. This is the head, arms going up, and then there's a leg coming up, and then a foot. Mm. It doesn't really look like a figure anymore. Lots mm. of energy in there. That's mm. a different mark making. This one is really subdued using colour. Um, and then this one is the last one where I've really thought about it. Something that just triggered me. I think one of the comments in here said, oh, we need, we need to play and free up. At this point, I started going, oh, no, everything is just a preconceived idea of what it's going to be. I'm a figurative artist and must draw a figure and must draw a face because <laughs> what I, this is what <laughs> I know. What I, do, yeah. I know. This is what I know. This is what I do. I draw, you know, I make faces. Actually, I don't want to do that. I want to explore something really different. Right. And that... Yeah is a difference between noticing where uh, my mind was in a safe place yeah. to allowing myself to play. Yeah. And that's my play. And I prefer that. Oh, such okay. A, that's a good example, isn't it? Of a journey. A good lesson to this process as well. It doesn't matter what stage you're at, even as a beginner and an established artist like Sharon, who's been doing this for 25 years, we can still get stuck in our own heads. Like you just said, that perceived idea of what art I make. And this is why, and kickstart and make your mark is about pushing yourself out of that perception of yourself it's about pushing you out of your comfort zone a little bit and we sometimes have these perceptions that i i don't like this so i i must make this this is what i'm good at and when you try something new you just go oh it's a bit it. fresh fresh yes yeah. Make it just a bit more fresh have a look at it from a different perspective this is what i want to do in my own art this is how I, this is what I do. I, I do this all the time. If my work is getting stale or stagnant, or if, if I'm not sure, you know, if I want to play around with a different or explore a different media that I'm not, I don't know about, I give myself time to play. And this is what mm. it's all about. This is the playtime process, part of the process of making mark. We're really white, aren't we? Look at us. <laughs> the light, oh. the light is really bright. <laughs> really high contrast <laughs> it is yeah and color we're all about the the yellow tones um will says my mind uh, says safe it says do what you know but i want to try new stuff and go crazy yes go for it R maribel says oh sharon i think i have a dirty mind <laughs> covid as we locked out of out our pottery studio oh Got a yeah. dirty mind. So anyway, we have to go now because we are off to go and finish off the final touches to make your mark. Sharon has spent the last week or more re-recording all the videos. We've got exciting content for Make Your Mark, exciting behind the scenes things that Sharon's going to be sharing with those taking the course. So we are going off now to go through all yes. the fine tooth comb. And um, we will be back then on Friday. And we will do a studio session from Sharon Pottery on Friday at the same time. I will email you all just so that you know when that will be. And uh, yay. Right. Yes. Okay. Keep going. Keep playing. Release the fear. Oh, get rid of it. Or just have a talk to it. 
talk just to your negativity really, committee just say just, just do it tea. just know as well <laughs> that wherever you whatever stage you're at right now you're not going to be at that stage in, in a day's time a week's time a month's time six months time a year's time there's that picture that uh, transformation of chris who joined make your mark and she did this painting which was lovely but it was flat it had no depth it didn't feel three-dimensional and she joined make your mark to make a more representational painting that's what i want and within a year she was painting off the scale blew us away yeah. because she learned from this process of what she wanted and what she wanted to focus on and you can make big massive leaps forward in art when you focus on what you want and you practice 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 play experiment mm -hmm. your art will not be in the same place in six months time with this process i promise you so try not to have it to get hung process, up where you are now because you won't be in the same place in six months time and if you hold yourself back now oh just don't do it let yourself free get out the cage okay <laughs> <laughs> motivational oh, michelle is amazing. amazing get out the cage that's today's that's, yeah. that's today's um <laughs> quote of the day um so we'll answer I, I can see some of the questions coming in how do you apply that you play to your work that's a great question yeah. Chantel. so what we will do in the studio at the studio on friday is we'll talk about how this play influences the work and in the course make your mark yeah sharon takes you step by step through how she uses this yep. process to like sharon she won't say this herself because she's very modest she is a very very successful full-time artist being represented by top galleries and has some amazing high-end projects lined up for her work she is she it. is an incredible incredible artist and has done this for a long long time and this is the process she's sharing with you of how she creates her own artwork so it is an amazing i really amazing want insight. to say it's a sharing thing isn't it yeah. art is i really truly believe that art is about sharing knowledge and mm. experience it's not a secret it's not a closed doors behind a secret you know you can only get into this club if you know x y or z it's not about that it's about your own journey that you're on and understanding where you're at and how to improve mm. using it and it's just using this really great design cycle that all artists use i use it all of my artist friends use it mm. and it's just it just improves your work no end it's improved mine yeah Chantel, yeah. enrollment is open from sunday so um yeah i'll email everybody the link it'd be lovely to have you on board really yeah. would yeah take care everyone keep yeah. enjoying it and we'll see you in the studio on friday have a great day Bye bye, bye. bye.